Three steps to conduct a food risk assessment. Step 1. Identify food safety hazard. What can go wrong? According to the CFIA, a food safety hazard is any agent that can potentially cause adverse health consequences to consumers. Food safety hazards can occur due to exposure to hazardous agents, resulting in food contamination. These hazards are typically categorized as biological, chemical and physical hazards. Biological hazards refer to the hazards due to pathogenic bacteria, parasites, viruses, prunes, mold and yeast that can cause food-borne illnesses or harm consumers. Chemical hazards refer to any chemical or contaminants that may be introduced at the growing stage, harvesting or during the processing or post-processing stages. It is important to include hazards associated with food fraud. For example, red chili flakes have been commonly known for adulteration with Sudan dye. Physical hazards refer to foreign hazardous extraneous materials that are not supposed to be present with the food but may be introduced during the growing, harvesting or processing. These foreign hazardous extraneous materials can cause a variety of hazards to the consumer, such as choking, cutting the digestive tracts, breaking teeth, etc. So, how do we put these hazards together in an efficient way to manage the risk? That's where hazard analysis comes in. Step 2. Conduct food risk assessment. How bad it can get. We conduct a food risk assessment to determine the food safety risks for the food products we process to ensure that we ensure the food is safe for the consumers. In fact, food risk assessment is a common practice that we use for developing and implementing hazard analysis and critical control points, HACCP. Naturally, Food risk assessment also serves as fundamentals for globally recognized food safety certifications such as SQEF, BRC, FSSC 22000, and Primus GFS, to name a few. You must conduct the food risk assessment to meet requirements for the country of manufacture and known country of sale. After we determine the hazard, we need to consider two factors, probability and severity. Risk equals probability x severity. The use of a risk matrix can help to guide your risk assessment. You and your food safety team must choose the right risk matrix that applies to your processes. Probability is the measure of how likely something is to happen. When it comes to assessing risk, we need to understand three things, hazard, what might happen, probability, how often it will happen, and severity, the impact if it does occur. Assess if this is not going to happen, unlikely, can happen, possible, or as common, likely. Make sure you note down the justification for your analysis. This may vary depending on your product processes and supplier credibility. Severity refers to how serious the hazards are to the consumers. Mild severity hazards can be minor quality defects that don't cause food safety issues but cause customer complaints. Moderate severity hazards can cause moderate harm but not death or injury. For example, the presence of lead does not cause immediate harm but can cause harm due to lead accumulations. Major severity hazards can cause foodborne illness, death or harm to consumers. For example, the growth of Clostridium botulinum can cause foodborne illnesses. Step 3. Reduce or mitigate identified risk. The fundamental of identifying food risk levels is determining how to control the risk. All risk levels must be controlled, but the control strategies vary depending on the risk level we identified. 
As identified in our HACCP plan, we commonly manage food risk through good manufacturing practices or prerequisite programs. This applies to wall hazards. Hazards with high risk ratings must be controlled further through other mitigation strategies, either through a critical control point or other monitoring strategies. For example, the presence of declared allergen must be controlled through allergen labeling steps or similar, depending on your processes.